Back in May, the Body Politic Group's patient-led research team released the very first substantiative study into the long tail of coronavirus symptoms, the condition that's now simply known as Long Covid. And in the seven months since, they've been extremely busy, finally this week releasing the study to pretty much end all Long Covid studies. Well, what's inside? Let's take a look. Unlike the first study, which was published online but not in academic circles, this latest study was not only IRB sponsored by UCL, but has gone through full ethics approval and is in the process of being peer reviewed. So hopefully it'll get published in a notable journal and can then get taken seriously by bodies like the CDC. This is actually a really big deal. So without further ado, what's in here? Well, 3,762 respondents from 56 countries uh, with a modal age of 40 to 49. 96% of them reported symptoms beyond 90 days. And the most frequently reported symptoms beyond month six, uh, this won't surprise anyone, uh, fatigue, post-exertional malaise, and cognitive dysfunction, also known as brain fog. The vast majority of this cohort had not had a severe acute case of COVID-19, with only 8.4% of them having been hospitalised. The range of symptoms was huge, 205 symptoms across 10 organ systems. This awesome chart demonstrates that well. Symptoms like fever are only likely to happen early on, but tremors, tinnitus, and uh, skin issues uh, tending to occur much later. This also completely reflects my personal experience too. The patient-led team broke down these symptoms into clusters, as you can see here. Um, tachycardia appearing in uh, cluster two. Uh, this was a symptom that only came on about six months in for me. Now, where things get interesting for me is where this study can answer some of the popular misconceptions about the condition. Firstly, uh, that is, if you didn't have a test or you tested negatively, then you can't have had coronavirus and so can't have long COVID. Uh, I've been saying this for a while now, uh, but that's complete nonsense. This study found no statistical difference in symptoms between those who tested positively and negatively, bar the loss of smell and taste. Uh, why this difference? Most likely due to the way the PCR tests are conducted. Uh, I would suggest that those who have a higher viral load in the nasopharynx are not only more likely to test positive on a nasal swab, but also experience the anosmia symptoms. As you can see from this merry bunch of symptoms here, it's not like the SARS-CoV-2 virus only lives in your nose after all, it is not a cold. It's a virus that can work its way into just about any part of your body as uh, various post-mortems of people who've died with the condition have shown. Uh, without regular biopsies though, most of us suffering from long COVID have got no idea where or where not the virus might be. And what about age disparity? Surely young people suffer less badly than old people, especially with cognitive dysfunction. Well, as it turns out, not. Uh, look at these charts. The dark blue are the youngsters, 18 to 29, rising to the green of the 70 plus. Memory issues, uh, no difference between the groups. And in these other cognitive dysfunction categories, attention thinking, executive functioning, and so on, we can actually see that the younger cohorts are actually affected more severely. These findings are so important for when it comes to understanding the pathophysiology of the condition and why I hope this study gets the attention that it deserves in a big journal. Some big findings in the rest of this uh, neurological section. Tingling and various forms of it experienced by 80.5% of people. 78.6% had issues with sleep, tell me about it, and headaches uh, reported by 77% of participants, including me. I find headaches to be one of the most debilitating parts of long COVID, often uh, acting as the precursor to post-exertional malaise. You know when that PEM headache starts, you know you're going to be in for it for a while. Uh, we've also got changes to emotion and mood reported by 88.3%. The stonkingly high prevalence of these neurological symptoms again is a huge clue to what could be going on. I've speculated in recent films about the causes of these symptoms and looking at this data it does seem relatively safe to say that serotonin deficiency uh, would appear to be playing some kind of significant role here. 
Other major symptoms, uh, systemic ones, like fatigue, experienced by 98.3% of patients. Post-exertional malaise, experienced by 89%. 86% had cardiovascular symptoms. 93% had pulmonary or respiratory symptoms, like shortness of breath. GI symptoms came in at 85.5%, the trots being the most frequent problem, uh, experienced by almost 60%. Skin problems slightly less common at 59.1%, although I'm one of those cohorts. I've had a total shocker with my eczema since I caught COVID. And then in the wonderful game of snakes and ladders, as coined by Paul Garner, the snakes. 86% suffering relapses, mostly drawn on by physical activity and stress. How long do these relapses last? Generally, a few days. So, how many patients still had symptoms after six months? Well, most patients still had most symptoms, as you can see here, although some improvement does seem to be happening. And the impact on work? Well, only 27.3% were able to work as many hours as they could before becoming ill. So that's almost 73% still not able to work in the same way as they could pre-COVID. Now, we don't know from this data whether the 27% were negatively impacting their health by attempting to work their previous hours. Uh, the results from my studies would suggest so, where I found that 93% of long COVID sufferers were unable to work full time without impacting on their well being or risking a relapse. This study by the Body Politic Patient Led Research Group is a landmark moment in the relationship between this novel, debilitating condition we know as long COVID and the medical establishment. I've only skimmed over the major points here. There's a huge amount to this study and I do strongly recommend uh, having a read of the preprint thoroughly yourself as there's so much good stuff in there. That is, if you can call the quantitative summation of thousands of people's awful 2020 indeed good stuff. In the meantime, look after yourselves and here's hoping we all have a rather better 2021. Till next time. Mm -hmm.